Hey everybody, it's Jason Bloha here, and I uh, made my video yesterday with the DEXA scan, and there were a lot of people who had comments, a lot of people who had advice, but some of the advice that concerns me tremendously are the people saying silly stuff like, you're showing signs of insulin resistance, because they clearly didn't hear what I had to say on the numbers, and they clearly haven't looked at any of the, the, the previous DEXA scan, and or they don't actually know how to interpret it. And giving advice to go on ketogenic diets. And I'm going to say to those people offering the keto advice, uh, you clearly didn't watch my Rich Piana video the other day. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, work on skill at my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Because here's what people need to remember. I am very, very well read on the scientific literature here. Heart disease runs in my family. All right, My mother died at 48 of a heart attack. My father's had three heart attacks. I am cutting body weight and cutting body fat for my health, for my fitness. I have no intention of doing silly shit because you read some pseudoscience by a couple of quacks out there uh, that goes against large bodies of data, suggesting otherwise that, that that's healthy. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that anyone who's got a history of heart disease in their family, anyone recommending a ketogenic diet to them should be sued for malpractice, uh, maybe even sued for attempted murder, because you're killing someone with that. That is a death sentence, and I really mean that, and that's based upon the data, and I am intimately familiar with the data of pro-ketogenic advocates. People say, well, you haven't read Dr. Jeff Fuller. Really? I haven't read a lot of Dr. Jeff Bullock. Are you sure of that? I haven't watched any of his debates. I haven't heard his arguments. Uh, guys, I'm pretty open-minded. I'm very familiar with him. I'm extremely familiar with his work with athletes also. I, however, am very well read on all sides of the argument. And that's the difference here. All these pro-keto people seem to all ignore all the mainstream data just like they sound like conspiracy theorists. Well, mainstream science is bright. So you're just going to go to alternative science and quacks because you think mainstream science is biased. Well, I'm sorry. There are people who have to make their livings uh, making sure their athletes are the best. And people like Alan Aragon, perfect example. He is a dietitian and nutritionist for multiple professional athletes. Someone I know personally, someone I put a lot of stock in his value. He holds a similar view on ketogenic diets. He's actually debated against Jeff Volek uh, in debates about this stuff, like public debates that I've watched. So, you know, if we're going to talk about, about it from this perspective, uh, you need to understand that, that there's two sides of the story. Uh, now, what I'm going to say here is someone who is, a, because of genetics in my family, is at high risk of heart disease. I don't care what your pseudoscience says. I, I don't care. I can look at enough scientific data myself and realize that a ketogenic diet would be a very, very bad idea for me. And people who are saying, well, you need to cut your carbs, cut my carbs further than I'm cutting them now. Do you guys know I'm losing two pounds a week as of the last couple of weeks, right? I'm going to go out on a limb and say I probably don't need to cut my carbs lower than I currently am. If I'm losing, if I'm losing two pounds of body weight every week, which I have been the last couple of weeks, is what I'm currently eating. It doesn't matter what I was eating two months ago. We're talking about what I've been eating this month, right? August. I'm down four pounds this month on the scale. I don't think I need to cut my carbs lower than that. I think that's good. Uh, you know, again, irrelevant where I was at, because you guys got to remember that DEXA scan was covering a span of time. Uh, no, I think, I think my carbs are just fine. I think my carbon takes just fine if I'm dropping over a pound a week of body weight. I don't think that I need to cut another 100 grams of carbs out every day. Uh, again, I'm back to this point of people talking about insulin resistance. I show the exact opposite. All of my data, all of my blood work, even my DEXA scans suggest that I eat a lot of calories. It shows that I tolerate insulin and glucose really, really, really well. Uh, and that's not an opinion, that there's no subjectivity required, that's an objective statement. I have 1.02 pounds of visceral fat. My, my fat, I store fat under my skin, I store fat in my legs, I store fat in my hips, I store fat in my lower back, I don't have a belly, I even store fat on my arms, I store fat under my skin. 
a large amount of it, I'm disproportionate on my lower body. I store more fat on my ass and hips and legs than average. Uh, that's not indicative of insulin resistance. And I have very, very low visceral fat. And it's actually relatively rare to see people who are 20% plus body fat who have only one pound of visceral fat. I'm actually kind of on the extreme end. High visceral fat is a sign of insulin resistance. My fasting blood glucose is in the perfect range on my blood work. Again, indicative of someone at zero risk of diabetes. Someone who has no insulin resistance. I train a lot. I have a fair amount of muscle mass. Muscle mass is protective against insulin resistance. Unless you've abused too many anabolic drugs, in which case those drugs can cause insulin resistance. That's, that's why you see that in some people. They're abusing large amounts of anabolics. And actually, large amounts of anabolics are also associated with visceral fat, which kind of comes back to my other point. People are like, you've been abusing gear. I'm not saying I've never used gear in the past high large amounts. Never said that. Obviously, I have. However, what the studies find is that they found that people who abuse large amounts and they come off have elevated visceral, visceral fat for several years, two to three years after they come off. It's still really high. I have one pound of visceral fat. I mean, just again, scientifically speaking, I probably haven't abused a bunch of gear in the last few years. Again, that's based upon scientific studies and what we see on my DEXA scan. Just throwing that out there, guys. Uh, my visceral fat <laughs> is low. That's indicative of someone who doesn't have insulin resistance and indicative of someone who hasn't been abusing large amounts of anabolic drugs. I carry a lot of subcutaneous body fat because I eat a lot. I eat, I've eaten more calories than I've burned. This is pretty straightforward. So back to the keto thing. Um, guys, I don't want to die. People who are promoting keto, who you see who are really ripped. Do you guys remember when I did keto for a year, did I get really ripped? No. Did I have less body fat than I do right now when I was doing keto? You guys remember? No, and I quit doing keto because of the large body of scientific evidence suggesting it was probably going to kill me eventually. Uh, and then my LDL was elevated. All the, the things that are bad from ketogenic diets and people who are saying, well, elevated LDL isn't bad. I read on a keto forum. Yeah, you need to go talk to a cardiologist. You need to talk with current dietitians as far as looking at the 2018 data. Elevated LDL is linked with causation with atherosclerosis. It's not a short-term risk, it's the long-term risk. And people who stay on ketogenic diets eventually have elevated LDL. I wasn't seeing elevated LDL. I was at risk of killing myself. These people who you see who are really ripped built their physiques not using ketogenic diets. They then go on ketogenic diets so they can market and sell them and they blast a bunch of trend. All of these guys who you guys think of as these keto guys who are jacked, ripped, and full, and they just stay peeled, they all look like they're on trend, too. They all have the trend look. All right? For normal people, ketogenic diets have repeatedly shown in studies to cause less muscle mass retention. You lose muscle faster on ketogenic diets than you do higher-carb diets. Jacking your protein way up is the best way to retain muscle and maintaining enough carbs to maintain performance. That, that seems to work best. Ketogenic diets cause muscle loss in virtually everyone who's not using drugs to maintain their muscle. That's it. I don't want to use a bunch of trend, so why would I do a ketogenic diet? Again, that's a double thing. Trend is linked with atherosclerosis. High saturated fat is linked with atherosclerosis. Well, I, guys, my mom died of a heart attack at 48. I'm 41, turning 42 this year. All right, I'm not doing this stupid crap because some kooky pseudoscience guys are promoting it as a fad, and because you bought into it. If you want to do this diet, you refuse to look at all the data. You want to die? Go ahead. I don't care. You're possibly doing the world a favor. But for people who are intelligent enough to read the actual data themselves. Uh, you're not going to convince us to do this. I'm sorry, you're not. Uh, I've done it before. I've seen the data, and I quit doing it because of health concerns, and it doesn't even work that well. I didn't get ripped doing a ketogenic diet. Uh, again, absurdity. 
and people pushing their absurd fad diets on other people because someone has marketed it as a gimmick and because you bought into it. And that's all it is, is a gimmicky fad diet. And it doesn't work that well. It really doesn't. It doesn't even cause good muscle retail. You lose muscle when you do it. I've already lost some muscle from probably doing the, the extra cardio, not training ideally. I don't want to lose a lot more muscle if I can avoid it. Now, there's other factors at play there, and possibly the DEXA scan, margin of error, all of that. But I'm going off the assumption that it is accurate. And that's what I have to work with, because that's my data point. So... Uh, I don't want to lose a bunch more muscle. I don't want atherosclerosis. All right, I don't want these things. Uh, and I mean, again, this whole idea that people think this is ideal for heart health, I'm going to be honest. You know, it's the, the people who get the best results for heart health as far as MDs and dietitians for people at risk are usually the people who put people on high starch uh, diets, low fat, higher starch diets. They actually tend to produce the best blood work for the majority of people. And I'm not saying, oh, go do a vegan diet. I'm not a big fan of veganism. But even the people who go the high starch vegan route tend to see better glucose management. They tend to see better lipid profiles. They tend to see reduction in heart disease risk. And it's not because they went vegan. It's because they're using starch as a primary fuel source, which our body actually handles really, really well, particularly if, if you uh, exercise at all. <laughs> we tend to handle it really well. And it actually, it, it does work. But it's not to say you couldn't add lean proteins in, but the issue is, yeah, the excessive saturated fat, it's a problem. And when people come back to, well, it's been said that saturated fat isn't the concern we think it is. That's right. It's been found through later data because of, you know, again, throwing out the Ansel Keys Seven Nation study and all this stuff. Yes, saturated fat in moderation turns out not to be harmful. It doesn't appear to be harmful to you. There's nothing about a ketogenic diet that suggests saturated fat in moderation. It's excessive and it is excessive saturated fat that's a major problem this is this is the issue with the heart disease and yes it is linked with hardening of the arteries all right it is linked with it no it's not dietary cholesterol causing it it's a saturated fat uh, so plant source saturated fat in excess which has zero cholesterol yes still seems to impact your lipid profiles to the point where there are MDs and cardiologists and registered dietitians saying don't drink coconut oil stay away from it for the same reasons, to the point where some researchers have even uttered, I've seen one utter, and it's probably an extreme statement in the news recently, that coconut oil is poison, as far as he's concerned. Not saying that makes it fact, it's just something to bear in mind. But here's the point, guys. I'm not trying to blast a bunch of trend and run a ketogenic diet to look a certain way. It's not my goals. I am trying to improve my health and my fitness, and a ketogenic diet is not a good way to do that. Even if I lost body fat on it, which I don't think I'd lose fat faster than what I'm currently doing now, uh, that's not going to make me healthier. It's not going to prolong my life. It's not going to make me more fit. That's, that was the whole purpose of doing this. Ketogenic diets aren't healthy even if they help you lose body fat. And a lot of people, they do. And I've covered why already in the past. Uh, there are reasons why. But that doesn't make it ideal and it doesn't make it healthy. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.